The first company doing anything at E3 2019 is, once again, Electronic Arts. Now, this year they do not have a press conference, but they are still doing a couple days of EA Play on the 8th and the 9th. And yes, we will be at EA Play on the 8th to check out whatever they have to show. And I think it's important for us to kind of take this time now as we lead up to E3 Go through each major press conference, not just Nintendo's, although we will be getting there, uh, but all the third-party ones, what we expect, what we think will be there, what we know will be there, uh, and maybe some guesses at some surprise announcements, and obviously if any of this is going to affect Nintendo Switch, and believe it or not, I might even have something from Microsoft's press conference that could be relevant for Nintendo fans, so stay tuned for that one as that will be our next video as they have the first official press conference on the 19th. Now, EA will be showing things off all throughout EA Play. They have a live stream going on, all that jazz, and uh, EA Play is kind of um, an, an event that the public can attend and uh, try out games or watch trailers of games. It's really weird. Uh, last year for Anthem, they had this thing where you wait in line for hours and hours and hours to go into this theater to watch other people play Anthem. It was one of the strangest, most canned experiences I think I've ever seen at E3, but it is what it is. This year, I think that same thing is probably going to happen with a game that EA has already confirmed will be at E3, and that is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That is probably the biggest game that EA has to talk about because it's a Star Wars game, supposedly single player, uh, and a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on with it. And a lot of people have been waiting for EA to get a Star Wars game 100% right. I think there are some nice things in Battlefront and Battlefront 2 that they did well, but there's a lot of other things that didn't do so well that kind of held those games back. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen here, although this is EA, so loot boxes, microtransactions, you can almost just know those are going to be in there but assuming the rest of the game is fantastic maybe we can overlook uh those ways of monetizing the game and actually get a great game underneath at least that's the hope obviously we don't know uh but star wars jedi fallen orders the biggest game they have coming it's being made by respawn entertainment uh again we don't know if it's gonna be playable uh the biggest game they had last year was anthem and it was not playable so if i had to guess you will wait or i guess eric and i will wait in line for hours on end to watch a trailer <laughs> or watch other people play the game that seems to be what they did last year i hope we actually get to go hands-on with star wars jedi fallen order but i'm not i'm not planning on it and i obviously don't think this game's coming to switch so i'm sorry switch owners i know it'd be great to have a star wars game i just don't think that this is going to be it uh, they still have yet to officially port over their Frostbite engine, which they build everything on. So it is what it is. Um, they also said that they're going to probably hear probably one other thing, uh, something to do with Titanfall. Uh, Titanfall 1 and 2 were both really great games, although the second one kind of released at a really bad time uh, in comparison to other major games that are like it coming out. Uh, but there's probably going to be a spin-off title or potentially Titanfall 3. I'm not sure which. Uh, there's been rumors of them doing a sort of Battle Royale style Titanfall game. However, now we have Apex Legends from EA, so I'm not sure they're really looking to go that route. Uh, so it could be more likely a potential teaser anyways. I don't know if Titanfall 3 will come this year, but I wouldn't be surprised if they teased Titanfall 3 at some point during EA play. Uh, and there's probably going to be, um, also updates for Apex Legends. I mean, it's just assumed that, that EA is going to have updates for that game. The updates are intentionally supposedly coming out slower than they do for Fortnite because they're trying to tout how they don't treat their employees, you know, making them slave over trying to get content out every week. I can respect that, but there still has to be something happening with that game to try to reinvigorate the audience because Apex Legends is actually a really great free-to-play battle royale game. Uh, in many ways, some people think it's better than Fortnite. Unfortunately, uh, it's not getting content updates at a decent enough pace to keep the audience engaged. So we'll have to see uh, what future plans are for Apex Legends, but uh, I'm sure we'll hear about that at EA Play because that has been one of their success stories in 2019. Uh, it's also likely that they're going to have something for Anthem. And I know this feels weird because the Anthem Twitter account, uh, hasn't like updated in over a month and it kind of makes you feel like they're maybe abandoning Anthem. But when you sign up for EA Play, you are allowed to schedule one gameplay session and Anthem is one of the sessions you can schedule. So they're clearly still trying to sell the game and convince people to buy it, 
So I'm guessing there's going to be at least one more content DLC something announced uh, coming to the game that they hope will reinvigorate the audience. But uh, Anthem is one of those games where it's a lot better than people give it credit for. But it did massively underdeliver the promises that it set out for itself. So it's like it is a really good game at the core of it, but it's not the game that was promised, and that's kind of the issue. And I don't really give AAA multi-billion-dollar companies excuses for underdeliver, you know, underdelivering like this. Like at least with No Man's Sky underdelivered on its promise you could at least be like well they are a smaller indie studio uh probably didn't have as much financial freedom as they were hoping like you can kind of rationalize how maybe they over promised and 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 under delivered i can't do that for anthem because this is a company that has the money and has the development power to not under deliver on their promises so uh that's obviously a disappointment but the game itself is pretty good uh, maybe it's the best game bioware has put out in some time um, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's up to the eye of the beholder. Um, other things going on at EA, obviously we can expect the, the bevy of sports games, right? We're going to see a new Madden. We're going to see a new FIFA, a new NHL, an NBA Live. Uh, that's just their yearly franchises. They're going to come out with those again. Uh, I would like to see Madden 20 announced for Nintendo Switch. That would be great. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we did get a, you know at least one year of Madden, even if it was an older version of Madden on Wii U, so it would be nice to see them actually bring Madden over. Uh, we've gotten FIFA 18 and FIFA 19 on Switch, so you can almost expect there to be a FIFA 20 on Switch. However, there are people getting frustrated with FIFA. Uh, more, more recently, they advertised yet more content uh, for FIFA for Ultimate Team, uh, and they advertised it directly on Switch, and it would ne- was never actually going to come to the Switch version. So um, I think a lot of the FIFA audience is starting to get a little annoyed on Switch, uh, and it's already a pretty small audience in comparison to the other platforms. So um, I've been saying this the whole time. If you're going to bring games over, give them equal treatment regardless of the visual cutbacks you need to do. But what do I know? Um, Mortal Kombat 11 seems to be kind of that, that beacon out there, letting people know, hey, look, if you give us day and date, you give us equal treatment to other platforms, same content, uh, hey, we're going to buy it. So I'm, I don't know. Maybe EA should try that before they give up but uh, this is EA we're talking about um not that interested in NHL but it, you know that'll be their NBA live it'd be cool to see if that's making even more progress on the 2k basketball game that's currently the king of all NBA games uh it's also likely just because you can sign up to play something from the sims 4 at e3 that there's probably going to be an expansion pack or something for the sims 4 I know many of you might not be into The Sims, but it's still a really big IP that EA's just had for a long time. And Sims fans in general, from who I've talked to anyway, seem to be really happy with it. Um, I actually debated on whether or not I should pick up Sims 4 uh, for my fiance because she uh, used to play a lot of Sims when she was younger, and I think she'd really enjoy it. But, uh, well, we'll see. It's not on Switch, so it's not something that you know, we're, we're looking at forward to as Switch owners, but it is something that exists out there. Uh, we could hear about new games from DICE. You know, that's something that could happen. I don't know what, but we could hear about something. Uh, you know, they're the ones that do the Battlefield and the Battlefront games. I don't really know if they have anything coming in 2019. It might, you know, maybe we won't hear anything until next year, uh, especially with that other Star Wars game from Respawn coming out. But you never know. Maybe, maybe they have something they want to talk about. They also own PopCap, which, you know, it has done Plants and Zombies in the past. They also have a stake in Need for Speed. So we could hear something from that studio. Uh, and Bioware is obviously like the big one out of the whole thing because Bioware uh, teased at the Game Awards last year Dragon Age 4, uh, which, man, um, I don't know if we should expect to see anything from Dragon Age 4. I would love to see gameplay. I'd love to see an actual trailer. But the fun story about Dragon Age 4 is that Bioware promised, someone at, at, at Bioware promised Jeff Keighley that they would unveil Dragon Age 4 at the Game Awards without permission from EA. In fact, EA directly told them not to promise to reveal it. And then, um, in revealing it, EA themselves stepped in and rushed something together just to have something for a reveal of the game. Uh, because the game apparently was in no sort of state to even show at all. Uh, basically, it's not in a state where EA would be comfortable even announcing the game 
because who knows? It, it could change. It could get canceled. There could be a zillion things. Uh, but now, you know, they were stuck with Bioware being like, hey, look, we want to announce the Dragon Age 4. We're going to announce that we promised it. We're going to live up to that promise. And EA's like, crap. Uh, what are we going to do here? And this is in addition to Bioware having a lot of other issues behind the scenes with overworking employees. That, that silly term, Bioware magic. Um, just... A hot mess. Bioware has been having issues for quite some time, and I'm sure EA is at the heart of a lot of those issues, but not all of them, uh, because not all of EA studios are being worked to death like they seem to be in Bioware, based on what I have heard. But that being said, it would be nice to see something from Dragon Age 4, just to know that it wasn't all smokes and mirrors like it definitely appears it was at the Game Awards last year. It'd be nice to know that there is something actually being worked on. Uh, whether or not it's going to be as good as we want it to be, I have no idea. Um, I know that Dragon Age has been a, a fairly consistently successful IP for Bioware and for EA. Uh, obviously, Dragon Age Origins was absolutely brilliant. Uh, you had Dragon Age 2, which uh, some people didn't like the new direction on. It was very different from Dragon Age 1, but was still relatively received well. And then you had Dragon Age Inquisition. And... Uh, that game actually won some Game of the Year awards, believe it or not. And I personally think it's like the worst of the three games. So uh, that being said, despite being, quote-unquote, the worst of the Dragon Age series, that lets you just know how great the Dragon Age series has been. So Dragon Age 4 has a lot to live up to. I mean, at least has to be as good as Inquisition, if not better. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what direction the game takes. I own all of the Dragon Age games. I'm a big Dragon Age fan. Again, not another game I expect to actually see on Switch, uh, but there you have it. There's probably also going to be some smaller indie titles, like the phase of the world that they've announced in the past, and those have a high chance of actually coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, and I would say if any of the other stuff I've talked about in the past, like the new Plants and Zombies is announced, that, that might come to Switch. Um, I, I would like to see EA kind of jump in and give full support behind Switch. But a lot of the games we're talking about here, we're talking PlayStation 4, we're talking Xbox One, PlayStation 5, the next Xbox, PC, uh, maybe even mobile. I don't know that we're talking much about, you know, actual Nintendo Switch titles. Uh, one IP it would be nice to see come back after last year personally, and this is just something I really want to see happen, is Command & Conquer. Now, that was a huge controversy last year. It might actually be why EA doesn't have an official press conference this year, uh, because the Command & Conquer, man, Command & Conquer last year was kind of an embarrassment for EA because they after this franchise being gone for as long as it was, they brought it back with a mobile game. And don't get me wrong, the Command & Conquer mobile game, at least based on what I've seen, looks really, really good. The problem is the way that game works isn't something that's going to appeal to the Command & Conquer community. So a more traditional Command & Conquer game being announced would be nice, but I wouldn't expect that. Uh, now, EA owns a ton of studios, so we could get any amount of surprise announcements all throughout their EA Play live stream. That's really all the announcements are going to be happening. It's going to be kind of weird because I'm going to be at EA Play, and they're going to be announcing things <laughs> at the same time. And none of the things they have to announce are probably going to be um, like actually at EA Play to see uh, because they'd have to announce it instantly. Besides Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which has already been announced, so... Um, I'm pretty stoked just to see what happens, but, um, that's EA and that's my expectations and things we know and some guesses and all that jazz for, for EA. And I'm very curious, uh, what you guys want to see from EA. Uh, what are you guys looking forward to? Are there anything you're looking forward to? Is this your least excited, uh, company? I know some out there, uh, really don't like EA for various reasons and i'm not going to say those aren't justified they're just your own reasons uh personally i really enjoy a lot of ea games and i always have hope that this next time around they won't screw it up like this time they're not going to screw up dragon age 4 right they're not going to screw up the next star wars game are they i mean apex legends was good we gotta give props or props or do apex legends was a very good foray into battle royale so like every now and then they get something right it's just are one of the major games we're maybe all looking forward to going to be that next game to get it right or just another game in a laundry list of games that kind of misses the mark over what they potentially are promising or what those games could be if they maybe were handled by a different studio or a different company. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. As always, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to 
like and subscribe. Uh, like this video. Subscribe for more content. Uh, enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Bundle giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. And be sure to tune in tomorrow as we will be talking about Microsoft and some of the rumors out there, uh, some of the speculation, uh, expectations, and all of that jazz. Uh, it's going to be fun. That's going to be the first major press conference of E3. And we will be live streaming that press conference as well uh, in L.A. We won't be doing it live, you know, quote unquote live from the from the Microsoft Theater. But uh, we will be live from the hotel room that we're staying in uh, reacting to that. So uh, catch you guys in that next video. Later.